Have you been wondering what on earth is going on with the housing market here and how to plan accordingly? Well, that's exactly what we're going to cover today, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss anything. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cody Oakland, a real estate agent here in Duluth, Minnesota. If you're new here and interested in all things Duluth, hit that subscribe button. And if you are even remotely thinking about making the move here and buying property, reach out anytime at the email or phone number on the screen below. I would love to help you out. I love hearing from everybody. But let's talk a little bit more about the Duluth area. Now, we have a lot of really important information to go over today. I'm really excited for this video, but this will be especially important for anybody that is remotely thinking of buying property here and wondering how to best prepare, what's been going on in the market, how can we really alleviate some of the stress and put ourselves in a better position to succeed. And there's a number of factors that play into kind of what's been going on. It's been a really interesting market this year. Uh, but I do want to make a point to first let everybody know uh, if you've been researching the housing market in general and you've been looking at like national news, uh, you do have to take some of that with a grain of salt because every market operates uh, differently. So some markets may have a ton of housing inventory available and maybe there are a lot of price reductions going on in that specific market. And part of that may be true. Uh, for some of our area here as well, but a big thing to keep in mind is our local area operates a lot different th differently than what is going on in some of the national news, especially for a big part of uh, this first half of the year. Uh, if you took like single family homes in Duluth specifically, uh, we were down quite a bit even compared to last year. So if you weren't um, noticing any or a ton of new homes uh, popping up for sale, that was a very real factor into what was going on this year. And so some of the price reductions uh, could have been just because something was priced really high uh, to start with and uh, wasn't priced accordingly to anything that was remotely for sale, similar to it, and some are selling still right away. Um, so you really do have to take... Uh, everything property to property, uh, but it was a very real problem uh, with the lack of homes for sale, uh, especially for this first half of the year. Uh, kind of seems like we're getting more on the market and kind of catching up a little bit, but it still has been kind of a big factor into what happened this year. And if you you are considering buying property, you really do have to plan ahead a little bit uh, with how the market operates uh, in the Midwest here in general, but especially our area, because there is seasonality to when more homes get listed compared to other times of the year. Uh, it's just the way it's been for a long time. Um, and especially in winter time here, like November to kind of like March time, sometimes even through parts of April as well. You just never know. It's been a little wild year to year lately is there could be a lot of seasonality with homes. So if you're looking to make a move here in winter time, there may not be a lot for sale. And that can be a, a big problem if you need to move right then and there. So do plan accordingly for the lack of homes during that time of year. You never know when the right home is going to pop up. So you really do have to be prepared ahead of time uh, to start thinking about like what's going to work and everything, which we'll go over uh, in just a second here. But seasonality of homes can be a really big deal, and it can happen in waves too. Uh, so parts of like lately, you know, some weeks will get more homes than other weeks, and uh, some some weeks will be very slow for housing. So you just never know, which is why I, I mentioned you do really want to be prepared ahead of time uh, to make the move on whatever you decide is the right property and a really big part of buying property or making a big move like this in general is really understanding what is available here and what is going to work for you uh, when you're buying property so one of the the very first things I always recommend is if you can make a trip here and check out the area see what uh, you're really looking for um, not just in homes, but what you want to be close to. Are there certain activities you do more than other things or wherever you want to be? Maybe there's a park you want to be right next to or, in, or or something like that. Or maybe you want to be closer to some retail or maybe there's a, a view you're really looking for and there's certain areas that may offer a better view. 
um, than others. And it will also allow you to really experience uh, what the terrain is like here, which can be different, you know, from area to area, especially if you're moving from like a desert area to here or anything like that. It could be a, a, a big change. And so that can really help, especially if you're not here in person to like uh, go through a property. Um, uh, so that can be a really big deal as well uh, if you're buying anything remotely. I always recommend to visit the area, and even if it's for a day, you can experience so much here because we do have uh, quite a bit, I, and a little bit of the layout of our area. One, you have the Duluth Hill, uh, which stretches for a long ways. It certainly doesn't take up the entire city of Duluth, but it does stretch for a long ways, and there's varying elevation on different parts. Some are steeper than others, um, and there's... a uh, not a lot of businesses on the, the hill itself. Uh, for most of it, it it's either really going to be like a roadway or forest area or some parks uh, to visit as well. Um, there's a, a scenic road, a Skyline Parkway, on the top part of it as well that uh, goes over a lot of the, the hillside. But uh, there's a lot of property, uh, residential property, on uh, the hillside as well. And... What you do want to keep in mind is uh, some of the property may be a lot of it on a hill, like your backyard may be on a hill, your driveway may be on a hill, but uh, the elevation can change. So some properties, it may your driveway may be completely flat, uh, and, and same for the backyard, and the only reason you deal with the hillside would be uh, transportation from back and forth from areas. So... Uh, that is part of just kind of learning the areas, the terrain. Um, same for like Lake Superior. We've got a lot of access to Lake Superior. And uh, like our Canal Park area is kind of our tourism hub uh, because that's where the, the harbor is. And they've got some like restaurants and retail built down there, but not a lot of like single family homes. There's some over on Park Point, uh, but there's certain things you got to keep in mind over there as well because the aerial lift bridge will go up and down. And you're open more to some of the elements, especially if you've got something uh, right on Lake Superior over there. Um, so there's a number of things to keep in mind uh, as you're kind of going through. Uh, we've also got like the lake walk that goes for, from like the Bayfront Canal Park area for about eight miles down to Brighton Beach. So there might be different access points uh, towards the bottom of the hill. Uh, to get to that a little bit easier. and there's But there's also a scenic train tour, so there's some train tracks that run by it as well that runs for part of the year. Um, so do keep that in mind as well. We've got a ton of parks. There's over 100 parks here, and uh, there's a lot to keep in mind. One of my favorites is Hartley Park. There's a lot uh, like oh, up in like Hawk Ridge area, Lester Park. Uh, you've got like uh, Lincoln Park as well and different things to explore. Um, but uh, besides just parks, we've got a lot of retail built up around like the mall area, the Miller Hill, Hill Mall. And so that's where you're going to find like the, a lot of the bigger chains like Target, uh, Costco, Home Depot, all that stuff is kind of built uh, all around there and goes into the city of Hermantown a little bit. And then there's some on that kind of the west end, west end of town and sprinkled through the neighborhoods a little bit. Typically, the residential areas will have more of uh, like a gas station, maybe a smaller grocery store smaller restaurant, things like that, uh, kind of sprinkled throughout. But uh, for, for kind of our main retail is really around the Miller Hill Mall area. And so we've got a lot of that. And just visiting the area will really keep things simple on where everything's at uh, because it's you know easy to look at a map, but it's a lot different. Uh, just experience everything in person as well. Uh, so do keep that in mind as you're thinking about making the move here. And lastly, uh, we do want to keep property in mind as far as planning and this is a really big step especially if you're familiar with the area or ha are planning to experience the area we want to know you know what are we getting into that will work as far as buying property and so there's some other factors other than just visiting that we need to keep in mind and I'm happy to go over all this on our phone call as well so definitely reach out if you have any questions um, and it's never too early to start planning but for property here, we've got a lot of different things available uh, as far as different styles of property as well. We've got a lot of like 1900 to 1950 homes and 
so if you really like that uh, character, some of those uh, homes provide based on, because of uh, some of the really cool designs back then. We've got a lot available. We've certainly got after 1950 to 2000s and some newer construction as well. And there's uh, a lot in the city. We have some condos and townhomes, not a ton, um, but we do have some available. And we've got a lot uh, out in the country as well. Uh, and there's some different things you want to keep in mind when you're buying pro that kind of property versus something in the city as well. And we've got waterfront properties, uh, whether it's something on a river. Uh, there's some on Lake Superior, certainly. Uh, and we've got a ton of other lakes. Uh, some have public access onto them and others. Uh, we've got a lot of like private access only lakes that are just for the homeowners. So uh, it really just depends on what you're looking for. I would, uh, besides just the kind of the standard, you know, how many uh, bedrooms are we looking for, different things like that, layout and square footage can be a really big deal, uh, especially when you're looking at anything online. You really do want to keep in mind, you know, what is the square footage that will work on each floor for us, or at least in a non-basement space, and then do we need basement space? Uh, it doesn't need to be finished, or is it okay if it's just for, like, utility space and storage space? Do I need a spot for a home office that's separate from other areas uh, that I can put in a basement or have somewhere else in the home? So these are really important aspects, and especially for, like, yard space. Uh, you know, what kind of yard space are we looking for? Uh, do we want a lot of land? Um, are we looking more in the outskirts of certain areas to get some bigger parcels? Do we want to be out in the country? And if we're looking at something like out in the country, uh, what is the train setup? What's the yard really like that we're looking for? Because you may see, like, there may be 10 acres for sale, but 10 acres may not be usable. Maybe only, like, three of the acres are really usable for yard space and part of that is going to be like your septic system the well is going to be on there somewhere so you won't have necessarily city utilities uh typically out in the country uh you probably have a propane tank for heat sometimes electric um, typically sometimes you'll find city utilities somewhere depending on where it's located but usually it's going to be a septic a well and a propane tank for your main utilities uh, what kind of internet access do we have uh, some of the country areas are getting fiber internet around here um, and there's other uh, high speed that's available but sometimes the speed varies so it's good to keep in mind you know especially if you work from home or or using the internet a lot what kind of speeds do we need um, uh, certainly Starlink may be an option as well uh, as far as internet if there's no internet available other than that it just kind of depends on what you're you're okay with um, driving distance can be a big thing. You know, where are you spending most of your time? If you're out in the country and you want to go to town, you know, how, how far do you want to drive? Uh, maybe you've got work in town or there's a lot of activities or something that's going on, or you've got to get deliveries out to the house. Um, and what kind of yard maintenance and driveway maintenance do you want to do? Uh, in the, in like the city of Duluth, you know, there's not going to be as much as your typical like country property, uh, but do keep in mind how much snow removal do you want to do in the winter time. So that'll matter more for your, like your driveway and sidewalk space. Uh, yard maintenance, of course, will be typically lawn mowing. So in the country, if you have a couple acres to mow or an acre or something, you, you typically you're not going to be push mowing that. <laughs> so keep that in mind as well. Or your driveway may be really long. Maybe you've got a 200, 500 foot driveway and that's not something you want to snowblow. Are you paying for a service to get it done? We've got a lot of different services here. Are you buying a plow truck? Um, leaf removal can be a big thing. I do a lot of leaf removal at my house uh, because I have a lot of trees here. Uh, in the city, maybe you don't have any trees on the property or maybe just one or something. And there's not necessarily a lot of leaf cleanup. So it could be less of a uh, big deal on a city lot, but out in the country, that could be part of, you know, what you deal with too. Um, and so these are all really important aspects we want to keep in mind when we're looking at, you know, what properties are going to work ahead of time. So that way when the right one presents itself, we can make a quick move on it. Well, there you go. There's a little bit more information on what's been going on here in the Duluth area. 
If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, share with a friend, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos about Duluth, Minnesota every week. And as always, if you're looking to buy or sell a home here in Duluth or the surrounding areas, reach out anytime at the email or phone number on the screen below. I would love to help you out.